Hey guys, this is Jason Brink. A lot of you know me as Bitbender. I'm here today moderating a town hall discussion with uh, three of the most amazing people that I have worked with. We've got Eric Schiermeyer, who is the co-founder of Zynga and resident awesome guy. We have Michael McCarthy, who is the developer behind some of my favorite games that I've ever played. And I'm super happy to have him here. And we have Wright Thurston, a man of many, many titles and a man of mystery. So I'd like to let each of them introduce themselves and we'll go from there. Well, since you said uh, my name first, I guess I'll go first. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Eric and uh, I am the CEO of Gala Games. And I'm really excited to get a chance to answer some questions that I know everyone has been uh, really excited to have us answer. And uh, I think that uh, we, have, we have a lot of fun and exciting news to share with you guys in the next couple of weeks. So um, looking forward to our conversation, Jason. Our next guy is Michael McCarthy. I'm the president of games at Gala and the designer of Townstar. And I feel like Eric does. We've got some big, cool things coming in the next, uh, the next even a couple months. There'll be some really neat announcements coming. And there's some big changes coming to the game of Townstar, actually, in a week or two. And uh, maybe we'll get, a, we'll get you guys a little preview of that uh, this week on Discord. Hey, guys. I'm Wright Thurston. I'm over uh, the blockchain technology here at Gala. And uh, really excited. My background is I've been one of the biggest Bitcoin miners in North America. And... I've been involved in a lot of uh, crypto projects and software projects and help uh, and helping to decentralize uh, the node program and the blockchain that uh, Gal is building over time. So really excited to work with uh, these guys, best team I've ever been with and actually most exciting blockchain projects. So uh, really excited to be here. Awesome. Well, thanks guys. Shall we dive right on into the questions? Well, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll take a stab at that one, Jason. Uh, for me, it's, it's really nothing less than completely changing the entire games industry. I, I see that there's an opportunity with the blockchain to unleash an immense amount of creativity from game developers. I see there is a chance to bring the most incredible game experiences back to the players. It, it used to be back in the day when you bought a toy, you actually owned the toy. Nowadays, if you go and you play a free to play game, uh, you, you don't actually own anything at the end of the day. And, you know, used to, it used to be the case that, you know, you buy music and you owned uh, a CD and you could play it whenever you wanted to. Uh, now, you know, if Apple decides that uh, you no longer should have access to that music, it's gone. Uh, the same is true with games. And so what we're, what we're trying to do, what I'm trying to do is really, really free games from the, frankly, oppressive control of Apple and Google. Uh, we saw it with, with Epic Games just recently and what they're doing with, uh, with Fortnite, I think is absolutely amazing. And I think that if we succeed at what we're trying to do, there are gonna be people, be people all over the world who, take, who have a completely different view of games. And so that's, that's what I'm really excited about, putting the games back into the hands of the players. I feel the same as Eric. Um, you know, when you're on a development team and you're, you're making something, it, it's really special to the people who are developing it. And then when you release it and you get it in players' hands, there's also this uh, kind of bond, you know, it feels like that they're your family in some ways, you know, that they're they love what it is you've built. And, um, and that, you know, that's, you know, very, very meaningful to developers. Everyone out there doesn't make games. Let me tell you what, man, when you make that game and people are out there and they're playing it and they're loving it, you know, it's, it's very special. It's very special. It's like you've made a piece of music or, or you've painted a painting. Um, when people love it, it's, it means a lot. So there's, there's that, there's that feeling you're carrying with you. And then there's this, unbelievable black hole that people are throwing money into and that's not necessarily going back to to the development teams it is going to buy ads on facebook or pay apple or google 
you know, oftentimes 30% of every penny you make. Um, I think if you're a massive company, you know, that just kind of fits into your accounting. But I think for a lot of developers out there, I mean, that, that could make the difference between having an extra developer on your team or having an extra few months to kind of put something great together, a new feature that maybe you were hoping to do. It's, it's an unbelievable kind of amount of money that they're taking from the players. And I think it's just kind of my hopes that our love for the players and the people that love our games can, uh, can just work out to be better for the players than it has been previously. Um, the thought that they're putting billions of dollars into a black hole just doesn't, doesn't feel right. And, and I can tell you that all developers out there kind of feel the same way. And I, I think you're going to see a revolution, not just for what the players are going to be able to own um, in the future, but of developers that, you know, there's going to kind of be a mass exodus of leaving um, companies that are supporting these kind of, of negative practices and they're going to be coming over to the good side just because they want to. They want to see their players uh, be happy and fulfill and be able to own their own content. So I'm, I'm on a mission like Eric. We're on a mission, guys. <laughs> it's a revolution. I think one of the things that's really interesting when you talk about how much money developers spend on advertising, and it goes straight to a very, very few companies. I don't think the average user has any idea how much money that is. What is the you know cost of acquisition for a new user in say a, a free to play mobile game on average? Would you say? Um, I think, and these numbers change all the time, guys. I've heard that it's as bad as twenty dollars per user, and that you know maybe five or six dollars would be on the low end, more like twenty dollars um, on on the high end. And you know, Eric can speak to this too. But what what that means is if you know, a thousand people come in the door and they were $20 a piece, that's $20,000 that the company had to spend just to get a thousand people to install the game. That means that those thousand people, someone of one of them or two of them or, or, or 10 of them, someone needs to pay in the game more money than that 20,000 just cost the company or else the company goes under. And that's really um, the calculation that that, that gets performed all, all the time. That means the game now needs to change. The game needs to be different to kind of maximize and turn those thumb screws from a revenue standpoint to make sure that, you know, and so what's on your mind is not making the best game you can or the best experience you can. It's about, oh my God, if it's gonna cost us this much just to get people to play, we better, we better just stay completely focused on how much money the game can make and how we can squeeze those bucks out of players' pockets. And again, doesn't feel right. Developers don't like doing that. Um, yeah, it ruins the game. It makes it, it make, so it's not a game. It's just exploitation at that point. You're designing a game from, from the get-go to do nothing but make money. And a great game will make money. But if you're starting from scratch, understanding uh, you know, CPI over LTV, cost per install over lifetime value of players, if that's where your heart is when you're starting to develop something, your, your heart's just not, not in the right place. You're not thinking about the player first and, and how much they'll love something. You're thinking about, oh my God, how are we gonna get money out of everybody? Um, and it sucks. What about you, right? You are the blockchain genius that's working behind all of this. Why is blockchain the solution and, and what do you feel that it contributes to making uh, Gala Games what it will be in the future and what it is today? Well, when I first met Eric and Michael, um, I really did see that vision of, you know, setting games free. And we're seeing it right now where every day you have thousands of new players joining and, you know, millions of rewards that normally would be owned by Nintendo or Xbox or a big gaming company are all owned by the players. And actually doing that and like eric said there used to be a day when you you actually owned your own toy you know that's what the blockchain does and the blockchain's amazing but a lot of people don't really use it we you know we talk about it it's a big deal but a lot of people use it for trading or you know maybe it's like some basic uh purchasing but i am just seeing a whole new different sector that i've never seen before of uh, the blockchain of people 
using the blockchain, not because they're trading a coin or something's flying up in value. It's because they're having fun. They love the game and, and you know, the reward right now, you know, doesn't even have value and they're just thousands of people are joining. So I, I think this is going to be one of the biggest uh, use cases ever on the blockchain and using the right software where anybody on their device at home can download and participate in this mission of decentralizing the video game industry and allowing players to, you know, to help us set games free. That's what I'm really passionate about. And we have some amazing software that we've worked on for years and years uh, behind the, the Gala infrastructure. And I just, it's really, I've never seen a, a project like this on the blockchain where so many people are coming to it and we're not telling anyone about it yet. And it's just, it's really fun to see. Now, you've been involved in blockchain for a long time. You've been involved in running miners for quite a few years now at this point in time. What was it that originally brought you into blockchain and how can you see that vision uh, propagating forward through Gala Games? I never thought, you know, uh, I guess that maybe I was thinking too small, but I never thought that so many things could be decentralized and that power actually could go uh, to back to the people and watching it in the energy industries, watching it in the financial markets, watching all the different technologies that are, that are being applied that um, are being used all over the world. It's uniting the world. I mean, uh, Bitcoin, I believe is like right now the sixth largest currency in the world. There's all these different blockchain technologies from uh, the medical industry to uh, you know, so many different sectors that just seeing that information and that collaboration of everyone coming together for a common good uh, is, is really amazing. And that's really what, what got me going uh, really er, er, early. And now seeing the video game, this is such a big theme. The only way to make this work with the blockchain is to have a real game. There's been other games uh, recently that have tried to do something or try to create a platform but, but really the secret sauce is you need these guys. You need the, these Jedis that have done things that no one else have done before and have brought in hundreds of millions of users. And you combine that with this decentralized network and the right motivations. And it, it is really exciting. And that's, that's what I saw when I first was talking to Eric about how big uh, this could be by actually, you know, setting all the games and the players and the developers and everybody free to, to do things that are fun and, and, and play games like, like Michael was saying for fun and for why do you want to play them? Not so you can spend tons of money or be in front of the computer 20, 24 hours a day. Right. I think really quick, Jason, you know, the yeah. blockchain, I think the magic of blockchain is that it's authentic. It's, um, and I think, you know, a lot of uh, people that might watch this video will know a lot about blockchain and that'll, you know, they'll, they'll kind of grok all of this instantly, but you know, for people who are maybe newer to blockchain, you know, what it means is that there's this kind of the ledger, there's this thing in space that says where all of it is, where the coins are, where the items are. Um, it cannot be faked. It cannot be fudged. I, as a game developer, cannot trick you even if I wanted to it is out there and it lives in your hands as players and we cannot control it. Um, and I think that, you know, that is the big fear that you're seeing. Um, and the reason you're not seeing as many of the larger developers jump on this boat, because man, if they can't control everything, then it's an automatic no go. But we're kind of taking the opposite approach. We want to put it in your hands. Um, and the blockchain technology allows that and allows you and, and anyone who's familiar with blockchain to verify everything uh, that, that we are doing and saying as we continue to build. Um, and I think that's where the, where the honesty comes from. And uh, that's, the, that's why I think blockchain is, is, is a great technology for what it is we're trying to do. I'd like to yeah. add something to this, actually. You know, it, well, I, I was watching the, the blockchain explode in popularity over the years and you know, as part of watching that, I was witnessing a lot of the scams. 
all the, the ICO booms. Now we're doing IEOs and ISOs. And um, frankly, uh, what, I, what, I thought, what I saw was a lot of really unethical behavior and this massive gold rush. And it wasn't until I was able to start to see just exactly how the blockchain could work inside of games that I really start to see what it could do for the players. And until we could figure that out, I, I really didn't see anything in terms of gaming on the blockchain as, as like a real, as a real thing. Uh, it was either just a gimmick or, an, or a test or an exploration or just a fraud, frankly. Um, and so, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we haven't done any kind of ICO. We haven't sold any of our tokens. This isn't some kind of get rich quick scheme. This is, you know, we've put uh, about $5 million into this project so far. We haven't raised any money to do that. Um, we are operating a company like you would expect a company to be operated. You know, we have employees, we pay those employees real money. And, you know, we're trying to build a product that we think our customers are going to love. And at the same time, we're also a blockchain project. Uh, and, I, and my hope is that uh, the level of professionalism that our team brings to this will heal some of the wounds that the industry has suffered over the years with all of these scammers and fraudsters out there who are just trying to take advantage of, of people. And, and my, my hope is that people, more than, more, than, more than even that, that people just love playing our games. So, so yeah. Let's, let's get into some of the questions that we got, Jason. I think we got some really, really Absolutely. good ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before we do that, I just want to say this is actually exactly what you said is the reason why I agreed to join this team. I've worked on a lot of different projects. I've seen a lot of different development not happen. Uh, and in my position in marketing, you know, I'm often, you know, the person who has to go out there and interface with the community and talk to people and find out what they want and what they feel and what they think. And the developers are very often behind the scenes. Uh, and I can't tell you the number of times where I've seen something, you know, seen developers hang entire communities out to dry. And in this, in my capacity here, I'm able to see exactly what's going on and interface with people on a daily basis and participate in the developer standups and see everything that's happening. And I cannot tell you how inspiring it is to actually see progress, you know, take place on a daily basis. Every single day, people are pushing things forward. And that's hugely inspiring. And it's not something that you see in a lot of blockchain projects. Actually, it's almost unheard of. And I really, really like it and appreciate all the work that's going into it. Well, frankly, Jason, I think for all, all of us on the, on the Zoom right now, it's kind of painful for us to take the time out to, to, make, to make this kind of video because we all know that there's a thousand things that we need to be working on right yes. this very second. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> everyone smiles. It's true. We all are super crazy busy, but I think it's important that we, we're at least taking this time to communicate some stuff to the, our our, uh, our, our community members. Uh, I think this is probably going to go for Michael, but what does the timeline for the full release of Townstar look like? Uh, and what other types of games do you anticipate being released for the, the Gala Games Network eventually in the future? Yeah, beta, beta is kind of a funny thing in the, in the game industry. Where, so the game is in beta right now. Um, and generally what companies will run at. There's two things that, that game companies or game developments would run at. Um, and this might be too much, too much sauce, but every time I give the, every time I give the community like extra insight into how it feels to be a game developer, everyone seems to appreciate it. So you can do two things with saying your game is in beta. One, you can just keep your game in beta for years. And what it does is give you a mulligan every time you release a feature. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Hey, well, we're still in beta. Um, I mean, I, I know games that were in beta for two years, three years. Um, we don't really look at it that way. Beta is usually the development cycle in the old school days um, that you would have before a game goes gold. And gold um, was you actually shipped a gold CD to a um, duplication facility. And that's how you got a DVD or a CD in your box. Um, so we, we still kind of look at it that way. I believe that we'll be in beta 
for about another two months, I'm guessing. Um, it's feature oriented. So we do want to be bug free. We do want to be performant on lower end systems. And I know there's been um, some complaints about how fast we're running on certain systems. So we're, we're taking some steps there. I want the farm bot in the game and mining box going on the world. Um, and we want um, uh, player rewards for people, um, uh, you know, maybe the top thousand players on the leaderboard should get some kind of reward. That's something that's important to us. And maybe guilds and counties. These are things that we have designed, but we, we have yet to, to implement. And some of them are just very, very tricky and are taking a long time. So I think we'll be out of beta when we have those features developed. And I expect that to be, you know, before the end of the year. Uh, two months of things go great if we encounter some, some difficulties, guys, or we have to put out fires, and it might be a little longer. But uh, that's, that's the timeline that we're working with. This is another kind of fun one. And again, how, how the sausage is made. It's a balance between what it is that we are just in love with and would love to make, uh, what we think works really well from a blockchain perspective, and then what you guys want. And, and I think it's those, you kind of triangulate those three things to determine what you'd want to release next. We're super excited about the concept of, um, of a role-playing game like an MMO that you guys can run around in and um, you know craft things and explore. That's really exciting to me. I've got a lot of uh, RPG history and background. And, um, I know Eric's a big RPG player too. And Jason, you are, you are as well. So there's that part of us that's just so incredibly excited to build a world like that and tie it into the blockchain. Um, so if you guys out there are excited about that too, let us know and that, that can make it pretty high up on the list quick. Um, there's, we're, we're open to almost anything that you guys would really want to see or that makes sense to develop, but RPG would be high. I really like the idea um, of a, you know, while Townstar is kind of E for everyone, I think. I think it'd be cool to get more of like a, uh, a war game in, if you would. I know a lot of the, you know, the you know, if you, if you let guys make Town Star exclusively, you know, we've, we've got a good presence of people that help balance us here. Um, but if you let guys make Town Star, there already would have been bombs in and a tank, you know, and rolling over to someone's town and blowing it up. Uh, but we really want Town Star to be kind of that E for everyone. So I think it'd be fun to have a strategic game, um, maybe similar to uh, Game of War or Age of Empires, um, games like that. I think it'd be really fun to have a a big massive world that everyone could compete and battle on too. Um, I think it'd be really fun. I think, you know, card battlers, I think uh, maybe there's a lot of them out there and I know there's already some that are on the blockchain. I think that's a fun one too. It's just, it's really simple and clean and neat on blockchain to, to have a card battler. I think that's a possibility. Um, so, you know, I think you'll be hearing some announcements guys in the next few months, but really what I think, we want to be doing is again, part of our initiative to decentralize is I want to give the players and Eric, I think feels the same way about this. It's like, we want to give kind of the control of what is being developed over to you guys as well. And if, if the community thumbs up what our product slate might look like, then that is what we should run at and develop. And that's, again, kind of a fun, meaningful thing for me as a game developer. Um, instead of what should we make um, being exclusively driven by you know, the bottom line of an executive somewhere, let's engage the people. What do they want to see on Gala? And uh, have you guys you know, help us make that choice or make that choice straight up? How do you envision Gala games staying competitive and ahead of the competition? Because... Uh, as one user who submitted a question, there's going to be copycats. Uh, well, I'll, let me, Jason, let, sure. me, let me just jump in on that one. Absolutely. I, I've, said this, I've said this over and over again. I really don't view the, the other games in this space as competition. I know we, we definitely, a lot of people feel that way in kind of a traditional game environment that there's 
there's a finite amount of money. There's a finite amount of players. Uh, I th what I what I see here is that, you know, if you look around at the game space inside of blockchain today, there's not very many players. And when you think about the fact that that I think it was most recently reported that there's something like three billion players in the world today, that that is effectively an infinite number of uh, of players for 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 all of the games uh, that could possibly be made right now on the blockchain. So uh, what 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 really kind of gets me excited is thinking about how can we partner and support other games in the ecosystem. You know, I'll give you an example. I, uh, I've had conversations with the team about us supporting other games uh, coins, like, like for example, uh, sand. You know, would it, wouldn't it be kind of cool if players could spend their sand inside our games or they are, you know, our players could spend our token in, in their game. It's, it's the type of cooperation, it's the type of experience that is, I think, absolutely transformative. And it's never really been done before. Because, um, you know, one of the things that's so exciting with the blockchain is that tomorrow, Michael could implement CryptoKitties inside of Townstar. And you could see little CryptoKitties walking around if he felt like it. And it's permissionless. It's, 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 just, it's you know, I mean, I'm not a lawyer and I, I don't think there's an IP violation given the, the, the decentralized nature of CryptoKitties. But as far as I know, uh, we, could, we could implement that without even asking the guys over at Dapper Labs. And I, I would, I, you know, I don't want to speak for them, but I would guess that they would love it to give their players even more consumptive use of their product would be amazing, I think. And, and so, there, you know, to answer the, the question that, that was asked in, in Discord, this isn't about competing with any, everyone else. This is about supporting everybody else. And it really is that. It's, I'm, not just, I'm not just blowing smoke here, guys. It's, it's really true. Yeah, I'd like to press that up a little bit, too. Um, so it's, it's true what Eric says. And I, and I think the, these are the big mind switches that people, like, this is, this is, it's like Uber to me. You know, I had to take a lot of cabs back in the day when I lived in San Francisco. And they commonly wouldn't come. They just wouldn't come to my, they wouldn't come. You'd, you'd say they're coming and then they don't come, you know, and then they come and then they, you know, they smell or they're mean or that I get in the cab and they tell me they won't take me home, you know, and well, then Uber came around and I called somebody and I could see the phone on my app. And when they showed up, they handed me a bottle of water and called me Mr. McCarthy. And, and it was important to me to get home. It's not a cab to go to a party. My wife was pregnant at the time, you know, I needed to get home from work and it was just very uh, it was a totally different experience and it was, it was an awesome experience. And I had my mind blown, like, wait a minute, I don't have to do it the old way. I can kind of do it this way. This is, this is fantastic. What Eric is saying is true. In Townstar, you've got these items like an express truck. Someone, someone could go make a game out there and put the express truck in it. We, we can't stop them. In fact, we don't want to stop them. Like the revolution here is that we are open to sharing what it is we're building with everybody. And the tone is so different from a game development standpoint when you reach out to other people in this space. It's not combative. It is cooperative. How can we help each other? Because this is awesome. The other thing from a game development standpoint that is a trap in this space when you talk about copycats, don't worry about copycats. Like just, just never from... from it is bad game development to have a vision, be making something that you believe in, and then every two months something else is coming out and you're like, oh, man, we got to incorporate that. Or how come we're not doing it like that? You can just ruin game developments by constantly trying to copy and steer, you know, steer things around because someone else released something. And, you know, have a vision, believe in what it is you're building. And if you build something great, people will love it. Uh, even if there is something that's that's similar out there in the market. That, that's always been our intent. Um, they actually have been doing crypto, uh, cryptographic work for most of the time. We've been optimizing how they can work on different devices um, and different 
operating systems like Windows and iOS and Linux and all these different devices. So we've, we've been working really hard at that. Um, we've got some great solutions. We're, we're trying to optimize it because we don't want any of that computing power to negatively affect any of your devices. We want it to be really easy and just have a really amazing experience. So yeah, we have some great things coming down the road and really excited about that program and how it gives everybody, uh, not just people in the USA or uh, in, uh, you know, a few countries, but everywhere in the world, somebody could help support this new decentralized game network and, and be a part of it. And so, yeah, we're, we're going to keep improving the technology and, and uh, making that better. And I, I, I think you can count on uh, that uh, cryptographic uh, support uh, increasing here in the future really soon. One of the direct questions coming actually, I believe, from someone uh, in Canada is, is there intended support for ASICs? and something of that nature in the future? Would you be able to run multiple nodes on one ASIC device or how, how do you envision that working? That is a great question. Yeah, we've actually had that built and we had it working part of last year. We've been parting, uh, part of the on-ramp, we've been trying to make it very, very simple to connect any device. And even with some of those high power, high, high computing ASIC or, or GPU devices, um, we, we have that and yes, there, there is a formula for the more computing power you have, the more licenses you can use on one device. Um, and uh, I think that's gonna probably be a organic formula that will keep uh, uh, morphing and you can check our website uh, for uh, more details on that. But, but, but basically, yes, we, we already have that support. We have that ability. We, we've actually already had ASIC devices connected. That happens at the pool level. Um, is is where that happens and where sort of the the magic happens where it enters the gala network and and so yeah we're we're i think really uh quickly it's going to be a very uh, uh easy and simple and automated process to be able to do that anyway i know we're having a lot of people inquire about it so we're we're working as fast as we can to to make that simple jason do you think it's um, and eric and right do you guys think it's valuable to give like a, you know, two sentence explanation of what an ASIC chip is. I think it's really kind of fascinating people that are newer to blockchain. Sure. We can do that. Do you want to handle that? Right. Or you want me to do it Yeah, or anyone? Uh, I will. So an, an ASIC chip is actually a specific chip designed specifically for, uh, mining Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that, uh, when, when the mining programs first came out, you were using traditional uh, CPU, GPU, FPGA technology, and man, it uses a lot of power. And so um, over time, people started using video game cards and then, then eventually went to these ASIC specific chips that uh, use very little power or a lot less power than they did before. They don't get as hot and they're able to offer a lot of computational power um, they're like many supercomputers is what they are and they can process a lot of transactions. They're really powerful and the technology keeps getting better and better. Um, you've seen that. And, and, and on the same side, uh, as ASICs keep improving over the last few years, you also have uh, GPU and, and other technologies and FPGA. There's other technologies that are starting to emerge as well that are, that are offering uh, really good computing, uh, computing power at a, uh, at very low power rates. And so uh, our goal is to make uh, our, our system uh, be so simple and easy that people almost don't even know they're, you know, they, they've turned it on, they've, they've uh, chosen the settings, but uh, it's just they're supporting the game and, and they can enjoy what they, what they love and it's playing great games. When it comes to playing games, how do you, what sort of view do you take on people who are using uh, bots or scripts and things like that to, to run their gameplay and to work on their, their towns and farms? Yeah, this is an interesting one for me. Um, I think where I would draw the line with um, some of this is saying, if we were to say that the, the only way to win Townstar 
um, or win any of our games is through the use of these bots or scripts. And, and to make, you know, so that everyone, again, I, I love some of these questions and the second they're asked, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what they're talking about. Um, but I think context is really important potentially for everyone that's watching these videos. Um, if you play Townstar, here's an example. Um, when you have goods to sell, you tap on your trade building and you uh, select the good that you want to sell. And then it, it goes off and um, comes back with some money and you tap to collect it. Well, there are kind of bots and scripts that you can run that will do this for you automatically. What that means is when you go to sleep at night, you just turn this on and, you know, and it'll, and it'll run. Um, so, you know, I think right now it is a viable strategy to kind of win Townstar if you want to really get in the top 10 to turn a script like this on when you go to sleep. And if you're not doing that, then it is far more difficult for you as a player to have enough money in your town to support the labor costs just to let it run overnight. And then you also need enough storage facilities to store what's being farmed. So I kind of think without one of those bots, how would you win Townstar? And that is a place where we would, where we would likely clamp down. Uh, it is not hard for us to detect that someone is running something like this. Um, we've already talked to a couple players that are doing it. So it's not a ban for me. Cheating would be a ban for me. And we, we would ban your ID and you would not be able to play our game skin um, if we were to catch you cheating. Um, scripts, I, you know, it's kind of like a, hey, dude, don't do that. We've detected it. And we could probably say that um, we're going to prevent you from playing this round. Um, next round, please don't use these. Um, that's kind of where it would sit with me. And I'll tell you why. Townstar to me is an interesting game because it is literally a game full of exploits. It's, it's just a game that is just ripe with them. They're falling off the tree. And we don't give you instructions for this. Every time a player finds something interesting or a sneaky little cool strategy that they can employ, I think it's exciting because they have that knowledge and they can choose to share it with their friends or upload it, or they can just keep it for themselves. Um, but you know, the, the game is far deeper than, than people expect. I love the idea of people writing things that might give them more tactical information about what's happening on the board. Um, I wish we had a kind of plug and play UI system. I love that in World of Warcraft, you know, it was like, I can't remember what the name of it was, but we always had to download a completely new UI that just communicated what was happening on the screen to us in a way that helped us um, win better. So I, you know, I really don't want to shut down the community in any way um, in regards to Townstar. I kind of feel like it can have this life of its own. But where, again, where we would draw the line is if there's just no way to win unless you have this thing running over here. Um, that to me would just feel kind of icky. Uh, generally, if people are writing scripts to do stuff, it's kind of an opportunity for us to release content. So I, I think one of the things that players have requested quite a bit is, hey man, can I, can I get a trade unit that maybe sells things automatically for me? Right, right. So I, I love that idea. Um, and I think that's probably, we've, we've kicked around the concept that maybe that could be a new, a new bot that you can assemble in the game, a trade bot. And I, I like that idea. I think that's fun. One of the questions that a lot of people in the community are interested in is the potential future for listing on exchanges. Uh, this is obviously something that you probably can't give specific information about due to, if you are in discussion due to NDAs and things like that. But uh, is there anything that you'd like to say to that general topic and to the usage of the Gala token in general? It's sure. an open question. Got it. And I think we all have an opinion. Um, my, my opinion is it, it starts with the games. So the most important thing for us is that you're coming to Gala to experience our games. If you want to spend money, uh, there's, there'll, be, there'll be ways for you to get the Gala. The beautiful thing about the blockchain, though, is that Exchanges don't even need to ask us if they want to list our, our coin. Uh, in fact, uh, OpenSea just a couple of weeks ago or a month ago 
listed all of our items without even asking us. Uh, one day we logged into Discord and somebody was asking us, hey, what's, what's this stuff on OpenSea? And, you know, we, we, uh, you know, everyone on the team was like, what, when did this happen? Who, who did this? And everyone was, nope, none of us did any of it. So, you know, I, it's entirely possible that someone will just list us without even, you know, but, you know, so, so yeah, I think, I think it's important. It's part of the blockchain experience, but you have to, you have to have the right, you have to be coming to Gala for the right reasons, guys, and, and come to us to play games because we're going to make some amazing games. So this is an open question just for everyone in general. And this comes from uh, the UK. It actually comes from a friend of mine who posted this and uh, he probably won't mind me giving him a shout out. But one of the things that's talked about in the blockchain and crypto communities is uh, not your keys, not your coins, right? This is, there are a lot of blockchain people who are extremely, extremely suspicious, of, sus suspicious, extremely suspicious of custodial wallets and I like that, that word, suspicious. Suspicious. It's, it's good, right? Suspicious. Suspicious. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. I think you just coined a new phrase. I, I think I'm going to tweet that at Cardi B. That needs to be her new song. Suspicious. Um, um, so anyway, obviously, uh, the the wallet behind uh, the Gala platform is not a custodial wallet. Um, people have their keys and things like that. What happens if the platform ever goes down? Would people still be able to access their coins and what would the process for that be? Look, it already, it, it's already happened. Um, you, you know, some, I, I've seen people in the Discord say that, hey, you know, how come I can't see my item here? I can't, how come I can't see it? And then, you know, we'll have some helpful Discord user point them to MetaMask or point them to some other uh, a tool. You know, if, if for some reason our wallet goes down for some reason or our website goes down for some reason, it doesn't change the fact that the, the items that you have in Townstar are immutable. They're, they're on the Ethereum blockchain and we can't do anything about it. Uh, it's very intentional, but by the way, guys, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of projects out there that have uh, have centralized wallets or custodial wallets. That's the term that the lawyers like to use. And um, our view is that we don't, you know, if we're, if we're gonna achieve true decentralization, we can't, we can't dip, we can't be able to reach into somebody's wallet and pull something out. We just can't. It, and we, we don't ever want to anyway. So why would we do it that way? I think Eric, you know, again, this is a point like, you know, there'll be a lot of blockchain guys that are hearing this and be like, okay, great, totally understand it. I think you, you just said something that's very profound, that is very profound from a gaming standpoint. This is a part of the revolution that I don't think people really understand. If you have an item in Townstar, we cannot take that away from you. Like, we just can't. If you were playing any other game in the world and somebody somewhere at that company decided to take something away from you, they can snap their fingers and it's gone. We have no ability to, it's not ours. It is yours. It's yours. And we can't do anything about that. Once it's yours, it's yours. It is in your hands and you can do whatever you want with it. And we cannot stop you. We cannot stop a company from like OpenSea from listing our objects. We cannot stop. And that's, that's why we're doing this. We don't want to. It is yours. It is truly yours. We cannot take it back. Um, I think that's really special and a bit of a, again, a real mind switch from a gaming perspective. Um, I mean, because everyone hears about, you know, these, these games where people will sell skins. Okay. They, they earn a mm -hmm. skin and, you know, CSGO or something like that. And then they list it on, on eBay and they sell it for X amount of money. They manage to transfer it and, uh, that's a terms of service violation and all of a sudden their account gets zapped and you know everything that they've built up over all that period of time playing is now gone. Well you forgot and, to you forgot to mention the part Jason where that account that you bought on eBay was actually stolen right by a hacker and when you bought it from that hacker he then immediately reported you so that he can get his account back and then sell it again. Yeah. yeah. So, Good times. Good yeah. times. 
And that's not something that's possible, you know, with uh, the Gala Games platform, you know, you have your key that, you know, series of words that they give you when you set up your account, that's yours. And uh, the flip side of this is that if you lose your password, there is nothing that anyone on the planet can do to help you get it back. And it's really, really, really important to make sure that you, you know, keep track of these things. Because it's not like with, with blockchain, you know, pass keys and, and pass phrases and things like that. You know, you can't just click the, you know, forgot my password button and have them email it to you, you know, nicely. Uh, you have to maintain that yourself because we can't help you get it back if something happens. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that is a... A different topic you do have to be you know a steward you are in control and so you set up a gala wallet you get that um that pretty big password uh and that what that means is that you're actually that's your key you're actually controlling uh your own key you own your own rewards and they're yours so uh i think we have some instructions in that process but that's a pretty uh um important password to keep so you know I'd, I'd keep it in a safe place um also if you did lose it there is a possibility that you could get uh you could try to recover it but you'd have to have the same email that you originally used to set up the account um we don't actually have them they're encrypted and and uh only you could access it so it's really important when you're going through that process to to uh take good care of that and i you know maybe it'd be good to do a whole video on that for yes the, the players that maybe aren't, you know, used to that level of uh, setup when they do something like this. Do you want to talk a little bit about the the farm bot, Michael? The farm bots and the crane bots. Sure. And we've, we've got a we've got a couple questions on those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When do you think they'll be available to be built? Um. I think you'll be able to assemble your bots in September. Um, and I think, you know, again, how the sausage is made, this is a challenging thing to do. Um, you know, you, you, the reason this is taking some time guys is that, you know, we need to be able to genuinely on the blockchain verify that, you have all of the pieces necessary to own this object and that we can burn those pieces, um, destroy them and have them no longer be tradable to anybody else in exchange for getting this very powerful thing that you can, that you can use on the board. And I think what you'll see is the crane bot will come online first and then the farm bot, uh, the farm bot is an additional layer of kind of technical complexity um, in that, you know, it will be, uh, give you the ability to to mine a coin while you play. Um, so that's kind of the time frame for those things. And I, um, yeah, you know, I think will, one one of the things. Go ahead, Jess. I was just going to say, ask: Will the farm bot and crane bot be represented by a single token uh, following this, you know, crypto crafting construction process? Yeah. Okay. The parts the parts will be gone, and there will be a single new token that you will own completely that you can use in, um, inside of Townstar um, or give to your friend. I, I don't know, whatever you want to do with it. And Michael, one of the questions I think everyone is really excited to hear the answer to around the farm bot and the crane bot is, will it be usable in other games? Mm. Yeah, I think this is a very exciting thing for me from a game development standpoint. The answer is yes. Uh, these coins and these tokens, these objects, these items, um, we, we will always try to come up with a really cool way for you to continue to uh, be able to use these things long term. Um, you know, even if we made a, an RPG, I love the idea of, um, you know, someone dug up some ancient technology and there's, you know, a, a bit of a farm bot piece under, you know, in the earth that could, you know, lead you to, to something fun inside the RPG. Um, I, I've always disliked as a player working so hard to make some unbelievably cool character in an RPG or any other game. And 
then the next game comes out and there's just really, I don't feel like there's ever been a really wonderful transition from one game to the next, um, at least ones that I've played. I, I want to carry with me something awesome uh, into game two. So I know no, no promises. And this is going to be your game, Michael, but I'm just going to throw a personal preference out. I would love in the RPG to take my crane bot and use it as a mount, kind of like, <laughs> you know, a little gnome <laughs> steampunk mount mm -hmm. from World of Warcraft. <laughs> Just saying, personal preference here, guys, but no, no promises. I shoot me an email on that, Eric. That's an interesting <laughs> idea. <I'd>, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, I... I it's just fun and it's cool. And everything that we're doing and creating and minting now for you guys to own, it is very important to us for us to figure out how to make it not just useful in Townstar, but useful in, in all of our games to, to come. Uh, so that, that is important to us to try to figure out. And it's a fun one. Yeah. I think one of the other things that's really important to recognize here, you know, kind of on that point that Eric just made is that any other developer could also build into their own game a functionality for that crane bot item. Totally true. So they could take that token, they can, you know, you have your own construction game that you're, you know, you're creating out there, Mr. Anonymous developer, and you want to integrate some sort of crane bot in a way to, you know, bring users over and to introduce it to new people. Because this system is decentralized and permissionless, you can do that. It can't stop you, do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. that's one of the most beautiful things about this. It's just, there's just so much potential and, and awesomeness uh, that is available because of these sorts of uh, permissionless open architectures. Yeah, it's fun. Well, I think that we've covered most of what people were asking in the community in, in one sense or another. Um, is there anything else that you guys would like to discuss? I'd like to, I'd like to say just a big thank you to the community. You know, I have never, like, I think our discord channel and I, I try to be on that as much as I can. It's just fantastic. We've got, I've just never seen so much positive, wonderful energy and people excited to engage and help other new players. Um, you know, it, it, it feels good and it's exciting to be making a game for everybody. And also thank you for everyone's patience. Um, you know, one of the reasons you're not seeing a lot of games on the blockchain is because there's no playbook or roadmap or assembly manual for all of this either. This technology and how best to utilize it um, is, is new. And there's a lot of lessons that, that we're learning as we continue to develop. Um, so I appreciate everyone's patience and I'm, I'm uh, you know, big, big love to our community. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it, man. Just thank you and thank you for your patience. And we're, you know, we're here and we're going to continue to pound on it until we get the formula right. Any closing thoughts, Eric? Well, you know, I think Michael said it. I think that patience is very much appreciated. Uh, you know, everyone has been so patient so far. Uh, I fully expect that we'll make a mistake or two. Uh, down the road and just know that, you know, we're trying our best to do things uh, as best as we possibly can. Excellent. How about you, right? Yeah, no, I'm just grateful, man. Great team, great community. I know there's a lot of people that have been involved for a while that are really excited to shout from the rooftops about uh, Townstar and the new Gala Games Network. And so, it's it's gonna be exciting uh september uh for our team so we're we're excited about it. yeah so thanks to everybody excellent i'm super excited too i'm absolutely delighted to be here and to be part of this and i can't wait to be the one to help bring some of these messages to you guys uh you're all amazing thank you for watching the first uh ever gala games town hall meeting in the future we plan on doing these live so you guys will actually be able to ask questions and we can get some sort of uh, stream going uh, but for this first one we just wanted to do it this way and thank you all for uh, your uh, patience with us and for being amazing members of the community and 
we'll catch you for the next one. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks for watching.